Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Shireen, and I'm a Master and PhD uh, degree in critical care medicine, and I'm currently a medical advisor and pharmacovigilance consultant in Toronto, Canada, uh, working with different stakeholders and businesses. So today's lecture, um, I would first like to thank, um, and I'm delighted to be part of uh, one of uh, many EUTP's uh, program, whether it was short courses, masters, or PhD in different disciplines of pharmacovigilance and epidemiology. What we're going to cover today is a snapshot on the Canadian pharmacovigilance regulations and practices that are currently being used. So just for legal notices and disclaimers, I'm speaking as an individual and my employer or any other organization that I mention do not endorse what is presented in this course. Uh, yet the references and links that uh, are provided within this course would be, of course, a strong guide throughout uh, your readings. Uh, what we have today is a series of objectives and outcomes that we wish to achieve in regards to the Canadian pharmacovigilance regulations and requirements for medicines. And the objectives that we want to cover today is the pre-approval and post-approval processes. We will focus on ADR reporting for both the industry and healthcare professional institutions. We'll take as well a brief on uh, the Bill C-17, which is uh, part of the Protecting Canadians from Unsafe Drugs Act of ADR reporting, and we'll focus on risk management plans within Canada. Of course, the learning outcome, we would wish to enable you to understand the pharmacovigilance regulations and safety guidelines within Canada compared to the US and EU legislations and guidelines. So this is the glossary that you would find and please feel free to always uh, go through them and uh, if you need any help through them at any time. So this is our course plan and uh, we will start with a brief uh, history on Health Canada's regulatory agencies and the organizational charts and departments within and then we'll take you through the pre-approval stages and the post-approval monitoring as well as the risk management planning. When we take an overview of the Canadian regulations, uh, the Canadian population is almost 36 million, uh, within 86% of the population mainly settled within four provinces. And as you know, that there are nine provinces and three territories within Canada. Ontario is the highest of the population, 38.5%, followed by Quebec, British Columbia, Alberta. The rest, 13.7%, uh, are being settled within the other six provinces. The main uh, Canada Health uh, Canada regulatory agency is Health Canada, and um, if we take a brief history on Health Canada, uh, it's originally created in 1919 as the Department of Health and it merged uh, with the Department of Soldiers and re-established to form the Department of Pensions and National Health in 1928. Um, it became the Department of Health or Health Canada uh, and then it reformed in 1944 Department of National Health and Welfare and in 1993 it became the Department uh, of Health which is what's currently known as Health Canada and uh, this uh, department uh, is the department of the government of canada with the responsibility for national public health uh, the head office is uh, located in the city of ottawa ontario um, and uh, with a workforce of approximately 9,000 people employees across the country and it has an annual budget exceeding three billion dollars um, the agency is basically responsible for uh, to the Parliament through the Minister of Health and provides policy leadership and coordination among bodies such as the Canadian Institute of Health Research and the Public Health Agency of Canada. Uh, 